Tara from Inspired Into Action. Today we are interviewing Tawana Brown Smith. How are you doing, Tawana? I'm good, Tara. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thank you for agreeing to do this interview with us. I wanted you to tell the listeners about what you do and how you started your business. Okay, so my business is Mom's Guide to Travel. I actually have two businesses. The first is Mom's Guide to Travel, and the offshoot shoot of that is MGT Travel Media. And MGT Travel Media is the B2B side of my business, whereas Mom's Guide to Travel is the B2C side, so business to customer. And Mom's Guide to Travel essentially is a travel lifestyle company. And I got started, I would say probably 2008, um, you know, the the company is all about travel, traveling with kids, uh, traveling without kids from a mother's perspective. How do you do that? What do you need to do? And just different products that will enable uh, achieving that sort of consistent travel life, make it easier, make it possible. So um, my inspiration actually was 2008, you know, I had my second son that was born that year. And uh, prior to moving to Maryland, I was, you know, sort of in uh, the Hollywood scene, you could say. And I was really trying to figure out how could I capture that part of my life uh, that I had in LA, as well as travel and manage having children and a husband. And um, I was watching Travel Channel one day and I saw all of these hosts who were traveling all over the world. And I said, you know what, how can I do that? Like, how, I need someone to show me how to do that with kids. Like, mm -hmm. how do you do it with kids? Um, right. Why isn't there a show that's really showing that? And uh, so I said, you know what, I'm gonna create that for myself. And I started actually doing YouTube videos and it was just simple videos showing, you know, us on our different adventures, whether they were road trips, whether it was me traveling uh, by myself with the kids, uh, whether it was packing. And then I started, people started tuning in and wanting to, and asking me questions about how I did it. And I started, you know, giving them tips. And soon after that, not long at all. I hadn't been online. I don't think I had a, a web, a blog more than a few months before um, an online publication reached out to me and asked me to write for them to cover the Baltimore area. And so I started writing for them about travel. And then, you know, next I was writing for 10 Best USA Today and then travelchannel.com and then TripAdvisor, Family Vacation Critic, Examiner.com. So all of these different like online publications, it just kind of like snowballed out after that. I had wow, never planned at all to be that's a great. travel writer ever. <laughs> that was that, that is so awesome. That's so awesome how yeah. you just took that one idea and that idea turned into something very big. That is that's that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And so um, I actually spent more time developing content for other people uh, than I did for my own site. So initially I was doing the videos and I would do uh, some of my own uh, blog pieces, but I really was working for, you know, I was getting a paycheck. So I was, mm -hmm. you know, writing more for them and still was maintaining my site. And then I sort of made a decision that I wanted to make sure that I built my own brand and, and you know, go back to why I really even started doing this. So aside from actually having the travel show, which is still, you know, something that I want, um, I, uh, you know, I just started doing more writing. And this mm. time I was writing for myself and I was being, uh, you know, brought in from different destinations, different travel brands, compensated for, you know, writing, uh, compensated for my time in all different types of ways. Uh, you know, from my very first press trip was to Jamaica, you know, I, from there all the way to Europe. I've spoken at a travel conference in uh, Spain last year, wow. hoping to do Sweden. I'm, I'm going to uh, Los Angeles this weekend for the uh, Los Angeles Travel and, travel and Adventure Show to uh, speak for a luggage company. So, you know, it, it, you know, you're right. It started as a small idea, but, you know, now it's a, you know, the time is really imperative for me to really focus on my brand, focus on what Mom's Guide to Travel is. So in addition to that, you know, I also plan trips for moms who just say, hey, you know what, I want to go, but 
I don't want to do any of the planning. This is my budget. This is when I can go, you know, help me out. So it's almost like travel coaching in a sense. It's not a travel agent. People always think, oh, you're a travel agent. No, it's more like a consultant. So aside from helping uh, the family really figure out where's the best place for them and the best option, because I'm not tied to any uh, airline or any hotel or anything, I'm working in their best interests. Nice. So, you know, you know, it's, it's a process where I'm really trying to find out everything about that family so that they have the best experience. I have to, at the end of the day, want to take that trip myself. Like it's right. gotta be that great of a trip where I'm just like, hey, I wanna go. So I that's know. always what I work towards. So that's one product that I offer. Um, I also do group trips, group getaways for women and I'm running one, uh, an intimate one to Costa Rica uh, in the fall yeah. this year. I went last year with my sister just to test it out, see like, okay, do I want to do this? So I'm doing uh, group getaways and they could be moms. Um, I prefer that they were moms just because I want them to have that time, get that time away from themselves for themselves where you just go, you know, you get a second, you don't worry about anything except for coming up with the money and getting yourself on the plane. Everything else is taken care of for you. You need to figure out what your kids are doing and you need to figure out what your husband is doing. I am not responsible for that. I'm just responsible. <laughs> Well, I am excited. I hope I get a chance to get on that trip. <laughs> you just need to pay. I make it easy for you. It just makes yes. it. And that's what I want because most of the times, a lot of times, you know, when we get into motherhood, we forget about ourselves and we forget about those things that we did before we became moms. And, you know, we're women and we, I am Tawana, you are Tara. You had your identity before the husband came in, before the right. kid came in. And if there were things that you did before, you, you know, you have to figure out how do you manage continuing to do that? If there are aspirations, you know, you have to, especially travel aspirations, you need to figure out how do you fit that into your life? I've, I've never been of the belief that I have to wait till my kids go to college before I can travel. Like that's not happening. We're either going to travel together. Or I'm going to travel by myself. Right. Or whenever. you and that husband going to find somebody to watch the kids exactly. and y'all travel. <laughs> and we're going to travel. Exactly. Which yes. is what we've done. We've made it work. So in addition to that, I also um, have a book, um, Mom's Guide to Saving Money on Family Travel, as well as uh, packing list cards so that, you know, Everyone's not asking you to pack for them. Everyone has their own card with uh, standard items that mm -hmm. you pack and you leave it in your suitcase. So they're, you know, erasable cards that, you know, you leave in your suitcase and you pack and your kids can pack and your husband can pack. Um, and then I also have a course that I teach on uh, marketing and I teach it on Periscope. So cool that's great that's great yeah. that's great a lot of stuff but that's really good because a lot of times families when you get to growing or you're having children you forget about those that travel and it's important to expose your kids to different areas different regions of the country um i know i was exposed to a lot of things when i was younger um because i was the only child but mm -hmm. i mean my parents took me everywhere but and it was good for me i mm -hmm. i was able to leave out the country at a young age and I was exposed to a lot of things and I want the same thing for my children right. and a lot of times I get discouraged I'm like oh my family's so big but it is possible you it just have is. a plan Yep, I'm actually planning a trip for a family of eight. So, wow. you know, the mom, the husband, and six kids. And it's interesting because wow. their travel style is very different from my travel style. So there are so many different moving parts. And you're right, you know, when you have uh, more than the standard number of two, there's other things that you have to take into consideration because the travel industry doesn't create products for you. No, they, <laughs> they create products no, for don't. families no. of four. Right. Yes. right. Yep. Two kids, two kids, and two adults, and that's, that's all. It. That's it. That's it. Yes, that yep. is a hard thing. So, speaking of hard things, what was the hardest thing that you can think of, or hard, hard, some of the hard things that you've encountered as you've been building your business? Um, I would say life, you know, life really sort of got in the way, you know, life happens. And so um, I was really kind of like on a upward trajectory right around 2012 and lots of things, you know, moving. And then 
my youngest son, he was four at the time, he was diagnosed with leukemia. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, it was a big shock for us because we didn't know anyone who had cancer in our family, let alone a child. And so it really, when you're one in a state where you're the, you don't have any family members, you have to really figure out how do you manage that? Like, how do you, and then you have another child, just how do you uh, manage your household? How do you manage your life? How do you take care of your child? How do you take care of yourself? Let alone keeping a business afloat. Yes. Um, so, and that's pretty much what I did was just, just kept it afloat for the most part. Um, and it was, it was difficult because, you know, you have to also realize to give yourself grace and mm -hmm. to give yourself permission to say no to people um, and just take a moment and just, you know, focus on what's important. Um, you know, but if you're a high achiever, it can, or an entrepreneur, it's really, really difficult to let go of that. Um, at the same time as, you know, doing what you need to do, which is, you know, being there for your child or, you know, your loved one, anyone who has a critical illness, it just changes your life. It changes your perspective. So mm -hmm. it was really difficult to figure out how do I do this? Yes. How do I maintain? How do I keep my sanity? Um, initially, I thought I was going to just stop. You know, mm -hmm. when you forget that first shock, you're like, I'm not doing anything. I'm done. Right. Like, right. I actually want to crawl up with my child in a quiet space and leave the world out. Like, right. I don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. But um, I managed it. I managed it. I, you know, just did what I could do. And it actually winds up being therapeutic for me to maintain it because then my world wasn't just about leukemia, leukemia, leukemia. I needed to find an out. So yes. I used it as an out for me when I needed to just kind of take a break from chemotherapy and doctors and everything that went along with that lifestyle. Yeah, that that's really good because um, oftentimes, you know, you get so focused um, when you're dealing with things like that, with whether it's children, loved one, someone being sick or have an illness, you get so tunnel vision that you can't think outside. You can't think about anything else. So it's good that you were able to use your business as an escape. Yeah, yeah, it's normal. I mean, and it's un it's understandable. You, you most of uh, traditional families, if both people worked outside of the home, both parents and a child um, has a critical illness, then one of the parents takes a step back yes. and they stop working. And so now you're down to a single income household and one of the parents stays home and manages the child's health care. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's and that's totally understandable because in some respects, like that's all you can do. Uh, right. So the benefit of being an entrepreneur is that, you know, I could write my own rules. You know, right. I could. Um, if I had writing assignments, I would do the best I could. Some things I had to let go, but um do the best I could to, you know, do things while I was in the hospital with him overnight or for several days. So again, um, I, it's just a, a shift. It's a mental shift and, yes. and it's okay if you don't have that mental shift, but if you can, if you, you know, it's really important to you, um, then you just kind of shift your thinking and say, you know what, this is going to be my outlet and I'm going to kind of maintain it. That's really good. Um, Tawana, what would you say, um, like three skills that you think entrepreneurs need to have this day and age and um, like, you know, media, you know, the internet is wide and everyone out there seems to have a website. What are the three top things that you think that an entrepreneur ha needs to have these days or needs to do? Um, so I think you have to have self-discipline. I think self-discipline is probably the most important thing because uh, there's so much distraction. There's so much going on. You, one person is telling you to go left. Another person is telling you to go right. People are telling you, you need to be here, 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 all these different places. And you need to have the self-discipline to say, you know what, 
I don't need all of those things. And I'm just going to be in this place and do this thing consistently, consistently, consistently. Uh, an entrepreneur has to realize that, you know, you're not, if you are call, calling yourself a professional, you're doing things no matter what. Okay. You're getting up and you're doing things no matter what. An amateur makes excuses. A professional gets it done. So that's a part of the self-discipline aspect of it. Um, another thing I think entrepreneurs need um, is, uh, is a community and accountability partners within that community. People that can keep you going, people that can root you on, people that can go through the journey with you to support you, to um, tell you about resources, to listen to you, to mastermind with you, and that who you can also do the same in return for. Because a lot of times when we are giving um, advice to people, we're also giving that advice to ourselves too, and we're learning something in the yes. process. So have an accountability partner in anything you do. I mean, goodness, you think about when you're working out or you're attempting a marriage marathon, you're running or a triathlon, any of these things that I've done as far as like losing a lot of weight or doing triathlons, I always had a accountability partners. Mm -hmm. And those, um, that element guaranteed my success, guaranteed that I was going to get to the finish line. And so I make sure that, you know, I have accountability partners, people that I can text or call, you know, whatever, but having an accountability partner uh, or a community, a support group. And to some extent, I would say, I don't know if I want to call this a three, but maybe it's a three. No, we'll call this three. So mm -hmm. you have to self-investment. Self-investment would be the yeah. third thing. You need to invest in yourself. And what that means is investing in your continuing education, whether that means uh, picking up books that focus on the, the um, industry that you're in or the skill that you want to learn. It could be taking online courses. Um, and then, I mean, not necessarily with a school, but different entrepreneurs that, you know, offer courses to teach you something that they know a bit more about than you do. Um, it could be um, investing in a, a coach to help guide you and to keep you on track in both life as well as business, but to also to bounce ideas off of and to help you get to the next level, just kind of like up level yourself. So definitely the self-investment is important. And I, un unfortunately, I see a lot of entrepreneurs that do not self-invest, um, which is, which is sad because if you don't invest in yourself, nobody else is. If you don't put money into you or your business, how can you expect to sell to someone and have someone else put money into you. You've That's got awesome. to tell yourself first that you're worth it. Right. You've got to be your first customer yeah, before sure. you can ask someone else to be your customer. And people don't understand that. You've also got, you, you also have to, if you're trying to sell a $1,500 product, you have to have been a consu consumer of a $1,500 product. Yes. It's hard to sell something. <laughs> Like you, you, you're not gonna you're not gonna right. get anything if you don't sow anything. Exactly. If you're not sowing into yourself and you're not playing a harvest, exactly. then you're not gonna receive. A, a, exactly. a, you're not gonna receive the output from that. You don't know that process. You don't know that journey. So yes. you 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 really it's a process and it's a journey. And if and a lot of entrepreneurs, I see them stumbling and I see them like not understanding that, that, you know, cause the onset is, oh my gosh, this is so much money versus thinking about the return on that. Yes. In the short term. Yes. But in the long term, what does that benefit you? I know when I first started working with my coach and, you know, and she's a really reasonable and she was like several thousands of dollars. And I was like, oh my God, how am I going to do that? <laughs> right, right. You know, um, and that was several years ago, but I've made that money many times over. Like yes. that is inconsequential. So, you know, you know people have to really think about self-investing. You're right. And and you made a good point about uh, accountability. I think a lot of times when entrepreneurs get out here, they are or they sometimes create this island where they're the only person on there. Right. And you have to you have to be able to be engaged with other entrepreneurs to share information to, like you said, to get feedback from people. It's very important. Yeah, it's very important. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have. I mean, because it is a lonely journey. You are on that journey. If you're a solopreneur, you are on that journey a lot by yourself. Yes. And you, you, 
you can't, you can't, you know, think of people as well as, you know, just a network who knows who they can also introduce you to who needs your service or your product. So, you know, think of it as that way. You cannot do it all yourself. And if I could also add as a caveat to the self-investment, I would also say, you know, learning part of that self-investment is outsourcing. So mm-hmm. not trying to do everything yourself. And yeah. I know as moms and mompreneurs, we suffer from that. Yes, we, we do. Suffer we try from to do it badly. We try to do everything. You know, partially control freaks, partially it is control freakism. <laughs> but it's yeah. also just, you know, always wanting to have our hands in everything and realizing that how much further along would we be if we just took a step back, put the money into hiring someone else to help us do the minutia of the job. Okay. Cause a lot of times we're so stuck being, um, in our business that we're not doing business. Yes. You know? So, yeah. you know, you have to, I have a virtual assistant to help me do things because I cannot manage it all, it's especially in, in the travel business where a lot of it is driven by photos. It's driven by mm-hmm. visual. So, you know, You've got me traveling, I'm there traveling, I'm experiencing, I'm taking photos. When I come back, I have to upload those photos. Those photos need to be edited. I actually have to write the story. I've got to edit the story. Then I've got to you know, publish the story. Then I've got to do the marketing of the story, the social media. So there's just a lot of things to do. How can I up-level the business and seek out different partnerships if I'm mm-hmm. taking care of all of those little things? Yeah. So that's another part of the self-investment. Yeah, it's important to delegate. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and if you can, like you said, if you can form those partnerships where, yeah. you know, maybe maybe if you don't have the money, maybe there's something that you can do for someone that they right. can do for you and you can do some type of bartering system. Exactly. But um, it's important to work those things out because I think if you start always working on your business, you're always going to continue working on your business yourself and you're going Absolutely. to burn yourself out. Yep. Burn yourself exactly. out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so lastly, what are three action items that you can suggest to people who are starting out in business? Maybe their niche is not travel, but maybe it's some other area, but just three overall um, action items that people can take who are starting their own business. What would you suggest to them? Um, I think that you have to really take a moment to sit down with yourself. So I, stillness, like be still for a second. Don't listen to anyone else. Just sit down and sort of meditate and really figure out what is it that you want. Like this is an action item that you, the first thing I think that you should take. Just like I watched that and I sat and I said, this is what I want. This is the vision that I have for myself. Mm -hmm. And really um, have a moment with yourself to think about, okay, so what is your purpose? You know, what is, you know, what do you believe your purpose is? Um, What is it that you really want to do and that you like to do so that you have no problem doing it for free for a while if that's what it takes to get it off the ground? Like, you need to love it because being an entrepreneur, just go get a job. Getting a job is so much easier. (laughs) (laughs) You've got to love that thing with the passion that supersedes all passions, really, honestly, because... um, it is a lot of work and understand what goes into it, which is a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of, you know, very long days and a lot of disappointment, but also a lot of successes. And so you, you need to have a little bit of a tough skin for it and, and make sure that you, you can manage those things. Mm-hmm. So I think the first thing is to really have stillness, ask yourself those really important questions in regards to that. I think um, the other thing that uh, the next action item uh, for any entrepreneur is to read, like read, read some books about entrepreneurism, (laughs) read some books about, you know, building a business, Uh, figure out who are the, um, you know, top thought leaders in in those fields, whether it's, you know, motivation, whether it is um, business, whether it is uh, networking, 
pick up a few books first and just kind of read. This goes back back again to self-investment, but in addition, self-reflection and constantly educating oneself. But you, if you think of any of the really successful entrepreneurs, businessmen, businesswomen, they all read voraciously. Mm-hmm. They're, they're big readers. And so it's something that I definitely make sure that I instill in my life and that I have a book going. And so I have a try to read a book a month, you know, um, just as far as my schedule goes, but really, you know, constantly have an appetite for reading. Um, and I think the third thing, action item, I would say is if I were to start over again, I would probably, I would, I would say find a coach or a course. I think that that is a great step for you because it brings in that accountability and it brings in that other, um, the person that works for you, the consultant to have some objectivity to your business and to say, help you maybe steer you in a different direction than you were thinking as far as, you know, certain business decisions. In addition, you also have, um, the benefit of their resources or the benefit of their network where they could say, Hey, you know what? I can introduce you to someone who does graphic design. I can introduce you to someone who does editing. That was one of the best things about working with a coach is that she knew all of these people that had the types of services that I needed that could support me in my business Mm -hmm. so that A, it wasn't taking me forever to do things because I might've tried to attempt to do it myself because I'm a crazy woman like that. (laughs) (laughs) Or B, I was not getting the right contractor to work with. So Mm -hmm. it was nice to get a referral and to um, jump over that hurdle of, you know, just working with the wrong people, the wrong contractor. So that's the other added benefit of working with a coach or a consultant. So I would do those three things. Sit still, answer those questions for yourself, read uh, thought leaders in your industry and just entrepreneurism in in general and, and business development in general, networking in general. And three, work with a coach or consultant in your business to help you know, guide you along the way, but also be a resource for you to, you know, in the sort of administrative support that you need for your business. Thank you for taking this time out of your schedule and doing this interview with me. I do appreciate it. Yes, yes. If people want to get in contact with you, how can they get in contact with you? So they can get in contact with me on momsguidetotravel.com and that's M-O-M-S guide to travel.com. I am also, um, you can email me if you have any questions in regards to uh, travel or marketing for your business, two separate businesses, but a lot of things are the same. Uh, And you can email me at admin, like an admin, at momsguidetotravel.com. And I'm on social media at Tawana B. Smith. Okay. All right. right. Great. And if you can't find those for any reason, she'll also be looking at this YouTube clip. So if you want to put your comments down below, you feel free to do that as well. Thank you. Have a great day and we'll talk soon.